Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and Link2 had a good thread about the three se sectors they thought could surge in 2024. I think they're, there's a good chance here that they're right too. They're saying AI, FinTech, and cybersecurity. Well, we know, what's, we know with FinTech, you get a Bitcoin ETF and it'll probably trigger a lot, including the FinTech IPO market. Um, if you get Gary Gensler out of the way, even more so. And then AI, of course, is kind of like a complimentary thing. And then cybersecurity. Now, I showed you, because Link2 is one of my sponsors, I showed you yesterday how you can search by the different vertical on Link2's website in the different private equity investments they have. This is the, I didn't show the cybersecurity one, but they do have two cybersecurity companies on the platform now, Big ID and Tanium. So I do think 2024 is going to be an interesting year. Here's Jeff Wilsner. He's the one that wrote the Coindesk article on the 2023 most influential. He says for Coindesk's most influential awards, it was fun to speak with Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, who was sneakily, he sneakily had one of the best comeback stories of 2023. But as Brad, Brad and I both said, the award spiritually belongs to the XRP army. This guy is a good guy. He's one of the he's one of the good guy journalists. And Brad Garlinghouse, of course, is one of the good guy CEOs. Check out the limb that E. Greg Crypto walked out on today. He did a little thread on his take, drawing parallels from past bullish runs. My opinion syncs with historical data. Eyes fixed on Bitcoin, as the majority anticipates forty eight thousand to fifty thousand peak potentially followed by a pullback, igniting a widespread alt season. Yet what's intriguing, a scenario where Bitcoin skyrockets to all-time high, retraces and unleashes a truly wild altcoin season. My camp, XRP's initial surge, seven to $10, a major retrace, then skyrocketing to a jaw dropping 20 to $30. Stay steady. The charts resonate with bullish vibes. Ready yourselves for a potentially wild ride. Well, let's hear about, look, this is Peter Schiff on Fox Business. They're not, they're not wanting to listen to what he's saying about gold versus Bitcoin. I, you know, I want to throw one thing out, I guess before I came out, I was <laughs> listening to Charles Payne talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. And you know, your late buddy, Charlie Munger is already rolling over in his grave uh -huh. uh, with all this hype now that uh, is coming out about, about Bitcoin. Yep, we're but looking gold, at it right gold now. Gold is real. Bitcoin is fool's gold. Forty-one thousand nine oh seven and climbing. Great to have you both. For now, thank you. Uh, yes, for now. Yeah, for now. Uh, <laughs> so then we got this. This is um the sailor question. Let's see what this is. The sailor question is how much of it becomes part of the quote unquote financial system, and does it? it is he suggesting that there has to be a payments element uh, or an actual he, transaction element? But he was saying back. gold. He, you were saying a payment. If it became part of the payment system, it could be much bigger. Well, but it also, just, if it became part of, I mean, this goes back to, can it really be part of the payment system and have actual and continued increase? Because as we we've discussed a million yeah. times, if it keeps Why increasing, so, nobody's ever going to use it. it except if you, except there's there's that company we had on that uses just little tiny little pieces. Here's, of here's what I would say. To, Whenever. What about that company Ripple and that digital asset XRP that none of you seem to want to talk about? Brian Kelly used to talk about it, but to now he'll only talk about Bitcoin. Obviously you're long, you're very bullish. Yes. Has anything changed in terms of the tra trajectory of the move higher? No, not really. I mean, certainly, uh, so this move is really built on this anticipation of an ETF, probably January 5th to January 10th. So as it gets higher as a trader, of course, I'm gonna get a little scared because you're saying how much of that is already priced in. We're getting pretty close to that. Um, but in terms of the longer term trajectory for Bitcoin, I think you just have to think of it as we're in this, car, let's call it one to two year bull market period. We'll have these pullbacks, even in 17 when we had a massive run, 
We had months that it was down 30, 40 percent. So you just have to keep that in mind. So January 5th to 10th, it seems like it's all downside. It's like you have to sell the news or the disappointment. So how do you position into that? I, I mean, I think you're long going into it and then you start layering out of it as you get towards the end, end of the year. So let's call it over the next week or so. At least that's the strategy we're going to employ. OK, and then the reaction, you know, in sympathy from the other. I mean, will there be a sympathy move too? Yeah. So generally what we've seen in bull markets is about a month after Bitcoin moves, it starts to go to the altcoin. So we saw Ethereum break out last night and then Solana, and then it starts to go down the list. And so that's what I would anticipate. Let's say, let's call it January or so. BK, good to have you here. Say hi to Brian, by the way. <laughs> a lot of this move has coincided or coincident with the fact that five rate cuts apparently are priced in for next year. Every time we get, we pull them forward, Bitcoin seems to take a leg up. Is there any truth to that? Yeah, I think it's a macro tailwind. We've been fighting the macro headwind for almost two years now, right? Rising rates, stronger dollar, all of that. The Fed's probably done. Europe has got a real problem on their hands. China's got a massive problem on their hands. And Japan is unlikely to tighten. So when I look at global liquidity, I think, yeah, short sure, gold, Bitcoin, both of them are going to do well in this environment. So question about the, the halving, I've heard it called the halvening or the halving, but yeah. either one. We're getting to that in April, I think, right? Yep. Um, and that's been a bullish thing before. I sort of wonder, is it the same thing, though? Is that already getting priced in, or is, this, is there something technical that actually happens that would make it be priced in closer to the event? So, not, the event? Um, so what we've seen historically is that the 12 to 16 months after a happening is the best performance of Bitcoin. So that's what everybody's thinking about. Um, this time, you know, this time might be different because the price of Bitcoin's higher. We now only have, I think it's 900 Bitcoin a day that come out, so that gets cut in half. It's not a lot of Bitcoin, but what it does do is it makes Bitcoin more scarce than gold. So for the first time in history, you have an asset that is more scarce than gold. In what way more scarce? Uh, let's call it a stock to flow ratio. So uh, the amount of Bitcoin mined every year divided by the amount, ex uh, amount outstanding, same with gold. And now there'll be, quote unquote, less Bitcoin than gold mined on a relative basis. All right, now BK, you, you sat in these seats for a long time mm. on this desk yes. as a Fast Money regular. And we know that you miss a lot of things about the show. A lot. But first and foremost, we know you miss Would You Rather. Oh. Well, hello. Yes. 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 We would do a quick game of Would You Rather, which is America's favorite game, of course. <laughs> would you rather Bitcoin or gold? Oh, Bitcoin. Yeah. You you're gotta, long both, correct? I'm, I am yeah, long, both. long both. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I mean, you got to bet on the fastest horse. I heard that once. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Japan or America? So DX. Okay. We won't worry about any of that. Now, this, before Brian Kelly and all of them on, on uh, the CNBC show were instructed that they weren't allowed to talk about XRP and Ripple anymore, um, they used to try to teach you how to sell it. This is late at some point in late 2017 my theory is that they were they and a lot of the news media were t instructed you're no longer allowed to talk about ripple and xrp all we're going to talk about is bitcoin and ethereum from now on but so this ripple, was the next before they, they got their instructions. so how do you even buy it well, fear not because our very own crypto baller bk is here to tell us exactly how to do just that bk yeah, sure. So Ripple has been on an absolute tear. And, and just to add to what Seema talked about, what Ripple really is going after is the SWIFT network or international payment transfer. So what you're talking about here is an upgrade of the international financial system. And that's a very big market. So that's why people are very excited about it. So here's them showing Orders, you how to buy it. Uh, they're a little bit backwards for your old school market folks. It's going to drive you crazy like it drives BK. But you know what? Still doesn't matter. Here we go. So up here, you can see. That's how to buy XRP. Look, John Deaton says, 2018, I had a very successful financial advisor tell me I wouldn't put anything in Bitcoin or crypto. I said not even 1% to 5%. He gave Peter Schiff-like response. Bitcoin's fool's gold. Ponzi government will shut it down. He told me I was effing crazy to have 50% of my net worth in Bitcoin. Today, in 2024, the Larry Fink of BlackRock, Fidelity, others pushing the ETFs. The same financial advisor is now advising his clients to buy the ETF, but put no more than 5% of your net worth in it. That's what slow and steady mainstream adoption looks like. I was saying this was going to happen five years ago, folks. It's happening. Now, I um, wanted to show you this because this is a great commercial. This is the new Coinbase commercial, and I like it. Get a job, save a little, take out a mortgage, buy a house. 
Get a job, save a little, take out a mortgage, buy a house. Get a job, save a little, take out a mortgage, buy a house. Get a job, save a little, apply for a mortgage, get a second job, get some roommates, rent a house. Realize the only generation that's going to fix this is yours and start building. I think that's great. Look at this tweet from David Schwartz. I've just read over the documents in the debt box case, and this is absolutely shocking behavior. The SEC went to a judge seeking an emergency order to paralyze several businesses and blatantly misrepresented facts to get it before anyone on the other side could defend themselves. Well, where's Congress? Until, look, the Congress can take care of business on these guys all day long but they haven't done anything. That includes Patrick McHenry, Tom Emmer. It's all talk, talk, talk. Until somebody, look, until these people start seeing re repercussions. The Gary Genslers of the world go, have gone through their whole life in the bureaucracy, and instead of ha facing any repercussions, they just leave their old job, and then they go to an MIT for a couple of years or whatever, and then they get put in a new job, but they never get punished. They never face any, any kind of punishment whatsoever for their behaviors. And until they do, nothing's going to change. So that's just the way it is. Now, in the, um, in the member group, which is members only, it's DAIXRP.com, we're going to talk about all the fake emergencies that, are, that, that they're, our government and across the world, all these organizations are trying to scare all of us into believing. We're going to talk about their fake emergencies. You can call them false flags or whatever you want to call them. In the end, it's just a bunch of lies and we are surrounded by them. And I'm going to show you some of them. All right. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button and tell your friends and family. If you want to find out about what's really going on, we're calling them out now. In, in the group, I can do it. Half of these emergencies is just a bunch of BS, fake crap. Here we go.